All right. To, to measure pH, you, use, you basically use two components, the reference electrode and the measuring electrode. And even in what they call combination electrodes today, that combination electrode will be broken down into two sections and, and, and three sections. It will have a reference electrode, it will have a measuring electrode, <clears throat> and it will have a temperature compensator. So what's the, what's the functions of the reference electrode? One is to produce a stable reference voltage, and the other is to produce a low resistance current path. Next slide. So we, we produce a stable reference voltage by <clears throat> using a silver-silver chloride element in the same electrolyte as what's in the glass electrode. We, we produce a low resistance current path. Next slide. <clears throat> Uh, by keeping your liquid junction clean. Go ahead. Okay. And the reference electrode, 90, about 90 percent of the, uh, the measuring electrodes that are on the field today, in the field today, use potassium chloride. But there are other agents that can be used. Uh, go ahead and hit the next slide. <clears throat> you can use uh, you can use potassium chloride that's in the 3 to 4.3 mole area because it gives you good mobility. You can use a slurry, uh, which also has still good mobility. If you think about potassium chloride or reference solution, what you want it to do is migrate. You want it to migrate out of the reference electrode and into the solution. So you're looking for something that has good mobility. In our industrial probes, we use uh, a gel of potassium chloride because it uh, uh, has good uh, viscosities and its mobility, while good enough to make the measurement, is in a gel form so that it's slow to migrate into the system. Go ahead, next slide. <clears throat> there are some so uh, solid state electrodes out that, uh, uh, back up one if you would please. We jumped a little bit too fast. Uh, there are some solid state uh, electrodes um, that capture the salt without immobilizing it. Okay, now the next one. There are basically two types of references that I want to talk about. One is the top picture and the other is the bottom. The one on the top is a, is a small industrial uh, reference electrode. <clears throat> in these cases, they have a finite amount of potassium chloride in them. They're filled when they're shipped up from the plant with potassium chloride or a reference solution. The reference electrode acts as a referee. It's, a, it's attempting to supply a constant millivolt signal back to your electronics. The salt in it is needed, and we'll cover this in later slides, but the salt in there is needed to make contact with the process and also to make contact with the measuring electrode. In the industrial type, we use gel fill. Again, the reason for that is it's it's harder to contaminate it. It's slower to migrate. We don't need as much uh, reference electrode in industrial probes as we do in ultra-pure uh, for DI water manufacture or for ultra-pure in a power plant. But it, when we're talking about the ultra-pure, which is uh, the electrode on the bottom, uh, we, we like to use the flowing type. And in that case, it's a one mole type KCL. And we'll talk about that also later on. But there are industrial types and um, the, the, the industrial types for process. And it's, it's good to know that um, you would basically use two different reference solutions for two different applications. OK. If we, if we break the, the electrode down, again, whether you're using two electrodes or a combination electrode, you always have a measuring electrode and a reference. And the reference is on the left-hand side. And in that reference is a silver-silver chloride wire. That's there in the center with a little ball on the end. And that basically goes back and ties into your electronics. It's immersed in potassium chloride. And the job of the potassium chloride is to migrate through the liquid junction and into the solution. It's supplying really what's referred to as a salt bridge. Uh, you basically are wanting the salts to leave the, the reference electrode, mix with the solution, and touch the reference electrode. Therefore, it's like a battery, therefore finishing the, uh, uh, finishing the bridge. In both cases, the body uh, coming down 
um, on, the, on either side is structurally strong. But on the glass electrode, the glass at the very end is very thin uh, and is not only glass, but actually has, uh, let's call it a membrane on it uh, with some oxides, because glass being an insulator would, be a hard, would have a hard time, if not impossible, uh, generating a millivolt transfer through it to go up in that wire. So uh, the, the membrane on the end of that glass is very uh, fragile. Uh, I've seen people use corduroy pants or uh, a knife or sandpaper to get uh, dirt off of them. And not only are you cleaning them, but you're also damaging that membrane. So it's important to know here that uh, the reference electrode is, is trying to maintain a constant uh, uh, potential, constant millivoltage, while the glass is developing differences based on the hydrogen and hydroxyl ion activity in that solution. Next slide. OK, there we go. So here's your glass electrode. Again, there's typically like a 7 buffer on the inside of the glass. Uh, it's got pH-sensitive glass on the end, and again, membrane. Um, typically, can, you can see this weld line where the bottom is attached to the structural body glass uh, on the sides. What's important with this slide is to see that uh, millivoltage generated by the glass electrode at 25 degrees C. And we've rounded these numbers off, but it's basically 59 millivolts per pH change. So you get a positive millivoltage, positive 59 at 6 pH, and negative 59 millivolts at an 8 pH. And as you, you can read, 118, 177 as you change pH values. But those are always true at 25 degrees C. It's important here to note, and we'll talk about buffers later on, but buffers are, have the same, uh, same situation. If it's a 4 buffer, that is 4 or 4.1 or 4.2, whatever the side of the bottle says, at 25 degrees C. Change the slide, please. We will get to that millivoltage uh, a little later on for some additional conversation. It's, we've mentioned up to this point glass electrodes. It's, it's also important to note that Honeywell has available, and I understand there's a few other of, of these products on the market, a, a non-glass pH probe. Uh, and these, and Honeywell calls them DuraFETs. It's a FET technology. Uh, at the end, it's a field effect transistor. Um, and it's a state-of-the-art technology, non-glass. And again, it's used in applications, uh, almost every application, except hot caustic, uh, high purity water. And uh, you, as we get into the high purity uh, conversations, you'll see why you would use a DuraFET and hydrophoric acid. Hydrophoric acid will etch the uh, FET just like it would etch glass. And again, glass uh, electrodes are, are fragile. Uh, they'll do all the applications except hot caustic and hydrofluoric acid. Hot caustic also, and we're talking about 12 pH at, at 180 degrees up or hotter, will also etch glass. Next slide. 